Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway here on this Monday to kind of continue previewing each position of K-State's football squad. And we move back in the defense today, talk a little bit about the linebackers, because this is going to be an interesting group. There's a handful of guys that have played a significant number of snaps at this point that are back. Uh, there's a number of guys that have been on the roster before, but they might see more time. And then you also uh, have some new additions and fresh faces that might play a considerable amount, like a guy like Alec Marenko. So I think there's a lot of ways to kind of digest what this linebacking unit will look like. But in, in your mind, Drew, uh, what is your overall thought and theme that goes to the linebackers in 2024 for K-State? Yeah, first off, like, uh, who are we? Like, uh, we got back-to-back defensive previews. I mean, the two offensive guys, we're just diving right into defense. But I think that the theme for this this year's linebacking core is kind of out of their control a little bit if you really kind of dive in and, like, how kind of these things happen. But it's all about staying healthy. I mean, this was a a unit that was just mashed with injuries last season, specifically at the Mike linebacker. I mean, it got to the point where Austin Romaine was playing with a broken hand and he was the the most healthy of the Mike linebackers. So I I think that kind of staying healthy and, and that kind of coincides with also keeping the guys fresh because I think that you kind of saw a worn down Austin Moore and a worn down Desmond Purnell near the end of the season. Now, by the time that the bowl game rolled around, I think that you kind of saw the Austin Moore and the Desmond Purnell that we were more accustomed to seeing uh, throughout the beginning of the season. But I think that they kind of got worn down because of injuries to other guys leading them to playing probably 90, 95% of the snaps. And that's just not what K State wants to do. So if this unit can stay healthy, I think that it has one of the chances or it has a chance to be one of the best linebacking units in the Big 12. Austin Moore was all Big 12 second team last season by the coaches. Desmond Purnell keeps growing and just is really underrated, I think, in terms of not just the K-State roster, but in the Big 12 as a whole. And then Alec Marenko was a really productive player in New Mexico when he was healthy. So if you get all three of those guys healthy, and you get guys behind them that are able to kind of spell them every once in a while. I think that this could be a very good unit. Yeah, it seems like the um, we've talked. I think depth is kind of the 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 name of the game with this team in a lot of different ways, and linebackers certainly uh, play a, a part in that. In in terms of how the the fit will shake down onto the field, and you know, here's the first set of guys we see. Then these guys will get mixed in, and then we'll see you know less of these guys, but they might see the field. If you had to put together a linebacker rotation right now for K State, what would that look like? So I think it would be the three guys that I mentioned: Austin Ward, Dozen Prunell, and Alec Marenko. And then after that, you're kind of you're searching for that next wave of three. My guess is that Austin Romaine will probably be one of the primary backups to Alec Marenko. He played a ton last season as a a true freshman at a very hard position to play as a true freshman. Uh, Another guy that I think could really push for playing time, and it depends on how far he comes along and how far uh, his health grows. But Asa Newsom has all the potential to be a guy that can really come in and spell either Austin Moore or Desmond Purnell and play either the my, or the Will or the Sam linebacker spot. And then that third spot is where it's really interesting because that could be any number of guys between like Cameron Salas could potentially come in and play. He's somebody that Joe Klanerman talked about uh, last season as a guy that was a true freshman that was starting to come along. Maybe somebody like Rex Van Y, who's another one that uh, was mentioned a lot by Joe Klanerman. Last season, and we got to see a little bit of flashes of Rex Van Y a little bit. And then the next way, the next one is kind of where you you really are hoping that somebody like Bo Palmer come around and be uh, more productive and kind of come in and spell guys every once in a while. Or maybe somebody like Terry Kirksey, the light comes on during fall camp. But it, it's it's a unit where you have a lot of guys that have a lot of potential, but you need to see that young depth really take that next jump. 
You mentioned Asa Newsom and, and the health factor from last year because he he and Austin Romain were both playing kind of to the same extent in terms of action on the field that they were getting, and then Newsom got hurt. What, where do you feel like the, the health situation is there for him right now? I think that he is going to be a full go, maybe not contact or anything yet, uh, but I believe that Chris Kleiman said that he will be participating in fall camp uh, at Big 12 Media Day. So that that's a big thing for K-State because he probably has the highest ceiling of anybody in the linebacking room when he is healthy. That's a that's a good good way to kind of you know transition into this now. I was going to ask you, is there anybody on this list? Because you gave your three, you said Moore, Purnell, and Marenko, but is there a certain level and a certain ceiling for K-State football that they would have an, be able to reach easier if one of these guys waiting in the wings took a step to where maybe, you know, you're pushing somebody where they're getting less snaps there? Because, I mean, honestly, I don't think Moore and Purnell are going to get overthrown. We've, we've seen how talented those guys are over the last couple of years now, but is there a scenario where I think you and I both really like Alec Marenko but K-State's better off if you get another guy that's like, hey, we don't have to play Marenko all these snaps that we intended because Asa Newsom or Austin Romain has made this jump. I think that that scenario is more of like if you are at a point in the season where guys are starting to wear down and you can get some guys like Austin Romain and Asa Newsom, I think, uh, to really kind of progress. I think that's where the ceiling is probably the highest. Because at that point, you probably have five linebackers at least that you feel comfortable with playing. And then you try and find that sixth. I mean, we talk about this more with offensive linemen, but I think that it needs to be discussed more at like linebacker and defensive end, where if you can just rotate guys in and out, I think that's where you'll kind of see everybody reach their max potential and their max ceiling. Because I think that if you, it's kind of like basketball, if you can find a way to maximize somebody's minutes, by hard capping them at a certain number and you have another guy that can come in and play another number that would probably hit their max cap and their max potential. I, I think that that's kind of like that sweet spot. And I think at linebacker, it's really important because linebacker at in the three, three, five is one of the tougher positions because you have to do so much and you have to really understand the game and have to understand how to use your leverage and how to get through blocks and get through block destruction because there's not a fourth defensive lineman that's there for you. Which is also, I mean, we've talked about, you know, in the recruiting stuff that they are getting those linebackers that seem to have a really strong understanding of the game already and how that ends up, you know, benefiting them down the road. Uh, and, you know, depth is important with the linebackers specifically because that seems to be the position that was hit the hardest. Last year, when it came to injuries, obviously they lost Daniel Green after uh, the third game of the season against Missouri, uh, and you didn't see him again. Jake Clifton ended up getting hurt early on there. He had to miss some time. Uh, then we mentioned Asa Newsom already, and guys just continuously seem to get banged up at that spot, so it's good for you know depth to develop. Do you think that's just the nature of playing that position or a trend – uh, independent to K-State with injuries at linebacker, or is that just a one-off and you're not too worried about injuries uh, at that spot more than others for K-State? I'm not too worried about it. I think that every year there's like one position that seems to get hit the hardest uh, when uh, in 2020 with K-State, it seemed to be safety uh, to the point like we we make the joke about that Texas game that Elijah Sullivan had to start at safety and got hurt on like the second play of the game. And that's just kind of how the 2020 season went. And last year was linebacker. It's been wide receiver before. It's been running back before. Like, I think that that's just kind of how the game evens out. I didn't even mention that at K-State, I should have met the first thing I should have mentioned was it's been quarterback before and we've seen that. So I think that that's just kind of how the, the ebbs and flows and it, if the injury God is on your side that you can get through a season with not very many injuries, but there can be one group that just gets decimated. And last year, Casey was relatively healthy for most of the year outside of linebacker. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So we we've talked about a couple of spots on defense already. 
where do the linebackers fit in terms of positionally on defense in your power rankings? If you had to give kind mm -hmm. of a, a ranking here of, okay, I'm, I'm this confident in this group, I'm least confident in this group, where do the linebackers stand? I think it's probably in the middle, and that, that's – that's probably because I have lots of high hopes for the defensive ends. I think that they could really, really take off. I mean, we talked about that in uh, the video last week where I think that the defensive ends have a bunch of young guys that are ready to go and they have a lot of older guys with experience that are looking better and could really have a lot of potential to take off as well. Uh, but safety, I think, would be my number one. Uh, for this K State team, I think that there's potential that K State could have three NFL guys starting <laughs> at safety uh, this season. So I think that that's kind of something where, if you're somewhere in the middle with this K State defense, because I know that all of the talk all off season has been about how the offense can be and how the offense can be more dynamic. The defense is kind of getting on sold a little bit and i think it could be one of the better units not just in the big 12 but in the country and we're kind of seeing this as we dive more dive more and more into the positional groups that i think that this defense could actually be what kind of carries k-state through the first few weeks of the season while the offense kind of gets used to a new quarterback a new offensive coordinator and new weapons around those guys as well well, that's uh, that's a good spot to leave it, and then set us up for tomorrow when we'll talk about the secondary. Because, yeah, the safeties just—it it seems like there's a lot of confidence there. Obviously, now we've seen the guys in those spots perform really well, so we'll talk about them and the corners who continue to kind of every every year now they they lose a guy or two, and you're thinking, okay, how how is this going to work out? Um, they they have some interesting questions to be discussed. So we'll talk secondary. Uh, tomorrow here on KSO. If you want the latest on the Cats, both you know team stuff, recruiting-wise for football and basketball, the best spot for you is to head over to On3 and find kstateonline.com. And then also make sure that you're coming back here every day, subscribing to the YouTube page and everything else uh, to uh, stay in the know about K-State. We come to you each and every day talking a little bit of Cats. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Thanks for watching K-State.